Sports Illustrated called him the most underrated athlete of all time, ranked his squad of four players the eighth best sports team of the 20th century, and even though he never played baseball, ESPN called him one of the 10 best pitchers in baseball history. Eddie Fainer was banned from his sport multiple times for being too good, struck out over 8,000 batters while blindfolded, and threw 238 perfect games. He was so good, the United States hired him as a government agent to bring back information on foreign countries. He went to North Korea, played on the North Pole, even faced Fidel Castro, and while alive, threw a fastball faster than any other major leaguer and did it underhanded. He was also arguably a crazy person. He was abandoned at a hospital at birth, was admitted to the psych ward multiple times, attempted suicide multiple times, pitched every season for over 50 years, traveled over 4 million miles, mostly by van, and refused to rest. But how fast did Eddie Fainer actually throw? How did he go from making over $100,000 a month to $40,000 a year? And why Eddie Fainer may be the greatest athlete of all time. It is safe to say that no player accomplished more in their sport than Eddie Fainer did in softball. He traveled the world every year for over 50 years in a van playing up to 250 games in a six month span, meaning that from March until September, he averaged 1.4 games per day. He pitched two and sometimes three games in one day, and during games he didn't play, he drove his team's bus to the next game. This drew in over 20 million live spectators throughout his career, because Eddie Fanner would pitch blindfolded, behind his back, between his legs, from second base, sometimes even from center field, and trolled his opponents with a comedy routine while doing it. On the surface, Eddie Fainer may look like a clown traveling the country in a van, but in reality, he had one of the most remarkable athletic talents in the world, allowing him to at one point make more money than anyone in baseball. His career also took tragic turns for the worse, at times making him bankrupt and extremely bitter. His team was similar to the Harlem Globetrotters, but unlike them, he wasn't facing bums. He traveled city to city, challenging everyone from local teams to the best softball teams in the world, and beat them with only four players. Him, a catcher, a first baseman, and a shortstop, and literally beat the world champions of softball multiple times. Calling Eddie Fanner the best athlete ever may seem like clickbait, but what other player in any other sport in history could play the best team in their sport with less than half of their teammates while blindfolded and still win? Eddie Fanner did this and was able to for one reason. He had a pitch so dominant and went so fast, science can't even explain it. And it all started with him playing softball in a maximum security penitentiary. Eddie Fainer was abandoned at birth because according to him, his father was his real mother's brother-in-law. To avoid embarrassment, Eddie was taken from his mother at birth and dropped off at a hospital. The next day, the nurses gave Eddie Fainer to another woman whose newborn had just passed away. She was dying of breast fever and giving a woman a baby to nurse her back to health was the only cure at the time. This apparently saved the woman's life, leading her to adopt Eddie Fainer. His adoptive mother was extremely religious. He was not allowed to watch movies, listen to radio, read newspapers, eat candy, go to birthday parties, dances. Eddie Fainer didn't even know Major League Baseball or hamburgers existed until he was 15 years old. By the time he was 9, he was already pitching in local adult leagues, and one of them even banned him from pitching because he was so good. This was not the last time Eddie Fainer was banned from softball. When he was 17, he joined the military and soon became severely depressed. He suffered several nervous breakdowns, attempted suicide multiple times, and was admitted to a psych ward, which he describes as a rubber room for quackos, saying that he belonged, quote, because he was wacky, wanted to die, had no home, no father, no real mother, was a uneducated, arrogant, belligerent, no good, miserable excuse for a human being. 
Feiner was convinced that the only way he could be cured was to find his real mother, and after going through public records, he found his mother was also looking for him. Turns out, she lived in the same town he grew up in. He literally mowed her lawn as a kid, with both of them having zero knowledge they were related. And this is when his life began turning around. He moved back in with her and began dominating softball in the Pacific Northwest. It is easy to dismiss Eddie Finer as one of the best athletes ever simply because of men's fast pitch softball's reputation of being a non-competitive sport. But this was not the case during his prime. Softball got plenty of exposure in the press. They reported on his team's wins, his team's losses, speculated what team he would go to next, and called him one of the nation's best pitchers. During this time, softball Softball was one of the most played sports in the country, with teams and leagues sponsored by companies who paid players to compete, all leading up to the national championship played in major stadiums like Soldier Field in Chicago each year. And when it comes to competitive sports in the 30s and 40s, this is about as big as it gets. But in 1940, Eddie Fainer was banned from playing in national championships, just for being too dominant. He had 19 different windups, 14 distinct delivery motions and five speeds, which he says gave him more than a thousand different pitches. Not to mention, he threw a fastball faster than anyone in the world. Eddie Fainer was so good at his sport, he wasn't even allowed to play it. So he came up with a better idea. In 1946, after his team won a game 33-0, Fainer told that team that they were so bad he could beat them with only four players, and they took the challenge. He had never played a game with four players, so in preparation, he asked the local prison if he could come and play the inmates, and they accepted. The King and His Court's first game ever played in Washington State Penitentiary against a team full of convicts. This was the first of dozens of games Fanner played in prison. After beating the prisoners, he and his team played in their first official match, and with zero promotion, hundreds of people showed up. Eddie Fanner threw a perfect game and struck out every batter he faced except for two. From that point on, he called his team the King and His Court and sent over 3,000 letters across the country trying to set up a tour, which immediately was a complete disaster. Out of the 3,000 plus letters he sent, he only got a response from a few teams in Florida. The King and His Court got into a station wagon anyway. They slept in their car on the beach and in boxcars, and when they got there, they found out the American Softball Association had banned their teams from playing them to avoid embarrassment. It rained for two weeks straight, canceling most of their scheduled games. And back home, Eddie's family was dead broke. They had their lights and water shut off because he had no money to send them. But during their last scheduled game, something strange happened. Word got around town and over 4,000 people randomly came to see them play, including a promoter who set up the team's next tour, a run of games in Canada that finished with a matchup against the Tip Top Sailors. They were the defending world champions of softball. The next year, they played. The first game ended in a 0-0 tie, but the second game with only four players throwing blindfolded and behind his back, Eddie Fainer shut them out and won 1-0, beating the best team in the world. Throughout his career, Eddie Fainer and the King in his court beat title-holding teams over 900 times. Beating the best team in any sport with less than half of your teammates is unheard of. Eddie Fainer is probably the only person to ever do it, and he was able to do it for one reason. He had a pitch that was absolutely unhittable, and according to some, went faster than any other pitch thrown in history, and it wasn't even close. But before we cover Eddie Fanner's insane fastball, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Current. If you aspire to be as financially successful as a major league superstar, Current is a great place to start. Current is banking entirely on your phone. With a Current card, you can shop anywhere visa is accepted. There are no hidden fees, no overdraft fees, and no bank transfer fees. And Current will save you money when you use it, because when you do, you can earn points and receive cash back. But if you prefer using cash, that's cool too, because you can withdraw cash from your Current card at over 40,000 ATMs across the US, with, you guessed it, zero ATM fees. Current allows you to accept direct deposits, cash checks, and offers an insights tool that shows you how and where you're spending your money. I use my current card today to buy a burrito bowl, and you can too if you click the link in the description and sign up. 
So if you like saving money and you want to support the channel, please get your current card today. Legend has it that Eddie Fanner could pitch a softball 114 miles per hour. The record in baseball is 106 miles per hour, but Fanner was throwing from a softball mound, which is 17 feet closer than a baseball mound, giving hitters way less time to react, meaning that his 114 mile per hour fastball is equivalent to a baseball pitcher throwing around 170 miles per hour. Now, did Eddie Fainer actually throw 140 miles per hour? Probably not. Most people believe his speed was actually 104 miles per hour, which is around the equivalent to a 140 mile per hour fastball from a major league mount. Anyone with a brain should be skeptical of this number. No pitcher in Eddie Fainer's lifetime threw faster than this. The best men's softball pitchers today only reached the 80s, and Fainer lived in a time before radar guns. However, this number was reported by the Washington Post, the New York Times, ESPN, and was verified by scientists at University of Windsor, Ontario, who used military cameras to clock his fastball at 104 miles per hour. Fanner used his fastball and the publicity from beating the number one team in the world to book games across the country to go on a tour for basically no money. He was still dead broke. While doing this, he also had jobs as a dock worker, a cane operator, a ditch digger, streetcar conductor, vegetable picker, gas station attendant, stand-up comedian, played saxophone at funerals, and even became a gourmet chef at a bar in an airport. It took six years before he ever made a profit on tour, which happened in 1955 when he made a whopping $5,000. But by the 60s, it was reported that at his peak, Eddie Fainer was making $100,000 a month. In that decade, the most any major league player made in a year was Willie Mays, who got a salary of $135,000 in 1969. Eddie Fanner was becoming a borderline celebrity. He was featured on the Johnny Carson show where he knocked a cigar out of Carson's mouth with a softball pitch while blindfolded. He pitched in a televised charity softball game where he struck out Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Brooks Robinson, Roberto Clemente, and Harmon Killerbrew in a row while pitching behind his back and between his legs. He played in 104 different countries, including Thailand, Saudi Arabia, and the North Pole, the border of North and South Korea, played a game on the Great Wall of China, in Cuba where he faced Fidel Castro, and the State Department even sent him to tour India and Pakistan so he could report what he saw back to the government. While there, Fainer says he was offered a harem of women for his talents, but he declined. The team usually played on softball fields, but throughout the years played on racetracks, rodeo grounds, and cemeteries, once played on an oil rig in Norway, an aircraft carrier, hockey rinks, football fields, parking lots, Eddie Fainer would play anywhere in any one. You may think it's ridiculous to say he's better than the legends of baseball, but he faced many of them, including Pete Rose, Willie Mays, and Mickey Mantle, and struck them all out. Obviously, this is an unfair matchup since they were playing softball, but during the early days of King and his court, Major League scouts would come to his games, and Finer was even offered to come to Yankees spring training in the 50s to compete for a spot on the team but declined because he couldn't afford the trip. On the surface, this offer from the Yankees seems like a publicity stunt, but if Eddie Fainer was alive today, I guarantee that teams across MLB would make the same offer, for the sole reason that he threw a pitch faster than anybody in the world. However, Eddie's 104 mile per hour fastball was measured during his athletic prime. This did not last. He would end up touring for close to 40 more years. At times, this got extremely dark and depressing. Eddie Fainer himself has publicly expressed resentment, and some of the stories told about his tours show that there are very few people on earth who could endure the life Eddie Fainer lived. His team once drove 4,000 miles in 11 days. That's essentially driving from New York to California and back. During that 11 day span, they played 11 games. This was typical and Eddie Fainer would essentially pitch in every single game. He once pitched 57 games in a row, did it in 31 days, 
and won every single game. He pitched over a thousand doubleheaders and over 200 tripleheaders, all while taking turns driving the van and staying in motels. And Eddie Fanner did this out of necessity. In 1974, he told Sports Illustrated he made $40,000 a year, a dramatic decrease from the $100,000 a month he was supposedly making in his prime. Maybe one of these numbers is wrong, maybe the shtick was getting old, or maybe the decline in men's softball was hurting his popularity. Either way, Eddie Fanner did not die a rich man. He played on TV and in stadiums, but the team was usually playing on a local softball field in a small town in front of crowds as small as 13 people. Eddie Fanner once hurt his knee in a game so bad the game was canceled and the hospital doctor told him he'd be out for six months. He pitched the next day and the rest of the tour. He once broke his finger and pitched for six weeks with only four fingers. This is impressive, but also shows he really couldn't afford to miss any games. On one tour, after his team got into a fight in a bar, their van was set on fire. They literally kept driving the van for the rest of the tour. Their van got completely engulfed in flames another time after breaking down, forcing them to rent a new one. They once got stuck in a flash flood and were saved by a man driving a boat on the highway, and their closest call was when the whole team survived a tornado. None of this could stop the king and his court. Living this lifestyle takes a massive sacrifice. His first wife left him and took the kids when their furniture and car got repossessed while Eddie was on tour, and he is open about how being on the road for six months a year put a strain on his relationship with his children. Eddie Fanner went through hell trying to capitalize on his insane talents, and this quote shows that at times, it wasn't very rewarding. In 1972, he told Sports Illustrated, quote, I know I'll never be a big timer because I'm not in an organized, glamorous, money-making operation. Just softball. Who cares about softball? I'm caught in a nothing game. It's like being world champion nose blower. His son told the same reporter that Eddie thought that when he turned 40, he was going to be glorified for his accomplishments, but became depressed when he realized he wasn't, saying that he worries people know him as a clown driving a station wagon across the country throwing a softball behind his back, when in reality, he's the finest player in the history of the game and nobody cares. Eddie Fainer was never truly glorified the way he expected, but he tried basically until the day he died. He stayed on tour for over 50 years years into his early 70s. While the major leaguers and world champion teams he dominated in his prime were replaced with casual co-ed teams, he still dominated and trolled his opposition. He was finally recognized in 2000 when he was invited to throw the first pitch in the Olympic Games. He was 75 years old, and the very next day, he suffered a stroke that nearly killed him. But even this couldn't stop the king. He continued to go on tour to MC games, sell memorabilia, and despite surviving several heart attacks, a stroke, and battling dementia, he occasionally got out of his wheelchair to throw a few pitches. Eddie Fanner died in 2007, but not before putting up a stat line that is truly unbelievable. He pitched in 11,000 games and won 9,743 of them, struck out over 140,000 batters, and 8,000 of them he did while he was blindfolded. He threw 930 no-hitters, 238 perfect games, played in 4,405 cities, 104 countries, traveled over 4 million miles, and played in front of of over 20 million fans. Eddie Fainer threw a softball underhanded faster than anyone in history and faster than any baseball player during his lifetime, played more games than any other professional athlete every year for over 50 years and did it with no rest while driving a van to each game using only four players while pitching behind his back between his legs from second base and beat the best teams in his sport while doing it. To me, this makes Eddie Fainer one of the most talented, unbelievable, and flat out best athletes of all time.